I'm pretty excited today because what I have in front of you is a test stand that has a brand new four stroke OS 30, I believe it's a 30 engine on it. Just built this test stand out of nothing fancy, happened to be some leftover wood. The reason I built the test stand is because I have several engines that I want to show in future videos. And I wanted to give people an understanding of you know, what goes into running one of these. A lot of stuff you see out there has got electric in it. So there's typically a speed controller and the motor. But when it comes to running engines, there's a little bit more involved so far as the fuel, the line, the filter, the carburetor, so forth and so on. So if you're new to RC as far as engines, I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you the parts and the pieces that goes into that. I haven't even touched this engine. So whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. I'm hoping it goes smoothly, but let's get to it. Up front, I have my OS four stroke 30. I have two lines coming out of it. This line is from the muffler going back into the fuel tank. This is to provide additional pressure for the fuel. This line is going directly into the carb and this is your fuel line. So as you can see, it kind of tails itself here, goes all the way back and directly into the tank. This is a fuel filter. Now you can get these in a variety of different configurations. I just happen to have this one on hand. I don't like to do a direct line from the tank to the carb because A, oftentimes I'm gonna be pulling this out to do any level of fueling. So you pull this off, Problem is, now I run the risk of getting a bunch of junk into the engine, which I don't want. So what I do, I install a fuel filter and any of the fueling that I do takes place at this point here, moving forward, so I keep it nice and clean for the engine. I'm gonna pop the valve off right here. This is again going in the fuel filter. I don't want to put fuel directly into the engine itself. So this is my fuel plug right here. And then I'm gonna pop that right back on. This right here is the throttle linkage. So as you can tell, it's running a line directly to the throttle, which is located right here. And then all of this leads up to a very oversized fuel tank running, I believe 10% nitro. It's an older tank, both this and the fuel. So hopefully this will actually work. At the very back, of here is where I have all of my radio gear. So let's take a look at this one more time. Got the engine to the filter, to the throttle, to the tank, all the way back here to the electronics. I've got the electronics in like a clamshell and this happened to hold just some electronics that I had purchased, but I liked how easy it was to open it up and keep everything inside in one place. So let's take a look at what goes on in the pack. Right here is my receiver that I have. I have two lines going in. This one is the throttle linkage, which you saw are the throttle servo. This one right here is to the battery, or actually, pardon me, this one actually goes into a switch. And then the switch goes into a battery pack. If we take this and let's turn this on really quick, just flip that switch. And then we'll go right back over to here. Yep, there we go. Throttle linkage is connected and it is connected up to the throttle right there. Let's get this thing started. All right, before we get going, what I'm gonna make sure that I do is get all of my prop nuts tightened appropriately. Give this a couple of turns. Now the factory settings are to default, which I believe is two to two and a half turns on this guy right here on the needle valve. There are three things to cover on the carburetor, as a matter of fact, on the back side. Number one, this is your needle valve assembly. This is what we were playing with earlier when it comes to either richening the engine or leaning the engine. Second thing is this piece right down here. This happens to be the carburetor air bleed adjustment. Now, you most likely won't need to change that or adjust it. It's set by the manufacturer, and the only times is when you are not getting accurate performance from adjusting the needle valve, you may have to adjust the bleed valve assembly right here. The third piece is on the back side right here, and this piece right here is the adjustment or is the adjustment for the opening of the carburetor. So in the back, you can see my throttle linkage moving. If this isn't fully closing, 
or fully open, it could be not just that I'm not able to swing the arm fully open, fully closed, it's that this might need to be adjusted. So if you move this in and out, usually a quarter turn or half a turn at a time, you'll be able to fully close the carb underneath. All right, before I get started, I actually wanted to point out something that's kind of key is I like to use electric starters for all of my engines. You could use a prop stick or a chicken stick as I like to call it. The challenge with that is it is going to be very difficult to continue to keep that engine spinning and to get good ignition. So I would definitely pick one up. Thing looks ready to rock. So we'll set it up at a third throttle. All right, let's do it. Plug is in. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow. That is awesome. First start, how about that? Didn't even have to try. I'm going to keep the glow plug in. I have no idea if you can even hear me. I'm going to keep the glow plug in to keep this thing firing. Mmm, that's a good, that's some good smell. Love that nitro. That's good. Wow, this thing is, that's amazing. Oh, give the guy a little more fuel. I'm going to richen this up a little bit because I'm losing power as I'm throttling back. That was an awesome first start. All right, let's do this again. I'm gonna give this guy a little bit more juice. I'd rather it run rich than run it lean. Otherwise you run a really high risk of damaging the crankcase. Now keep in mind, I'm not standing to either side of this. And though it seems like I'm really in the middle of this whole thing, I'm actually about two or three feet behind the engine. As a matter of fact, the camera is probably in more danger than I am. You know, one of the things I actually forgot to mention that is unique to the four strokes is something called a bleed valve right here. And this is where a lot of the unused oil from the crankcase gets pushed out through the back. I don't know if you can tell, but there's quite a bit of mess down in here. And that's a lot of the oil that came out, but again, I'm running it rich, so no big deal. So let's go and run this thing, because I want, hopefully I can get some of that smoke that I wanted to show you, to show you what I mean by it's running rich. So there you have it folks, a little run in, run up, break in process. I'm really excited and happy how my uh, test stand pulled through or how, how it worked out. Also, I'm really excited at how just quick and easy this engine turned over. I'm gonna put a couple more uh, tanks of fuel through this thing to get a really good break in. The smoke coming out was really white and that's perfect. Eventually I'll thin it out and kind of get it tuned up to exactly where I want it. And if you're interested in getting into engines, I hope you don't feel intimidated in any way, shape or form. Once you start understanding the parts and the pieces, I think you'll be well on your way. Thanks for watching. Fly safe, fly smart.